little 26 foot Jayco bunkhouse back here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, this was uh, here last year. I've uh, only been owned for about a year. And well, I mean, it's a 98, so it hasn't been owned for a year. The most recent owner only had it for about a year. Kind of dipped his toes in the water with an inexpensive but good shape used trailer. Uh, had it parked and uh, that's where it stayed. Uh, decided that, yeah, time to upgrade, time to get a little bigger. They bought a new RV and said, hey, um, any chance you guys could sell my old one for me? And turns out we have a consignment license, so we can do exactly that. Kind of works out that we're a Jayco dealer, so we know how this is put together, and, you know, since we sold it before, we knew the history of it. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I want to mention on this, we're selling this on consignment. Think of it like, um, kind of like real estate. Pretend this is a house. Pretend we're a real estate broker. Um, so, you know, we're kind of selling a property in a sense. Uh, the only known defect on this RV is that the freshwater fill hose from the outside to the water uh, tank uh, appears to be cracked. Previous owner had always park camped, so didn't really care. He didn't really want to get into fixing that and whatnot, so that uh, defect does still exist today. That's one of those things where it's the seller's choice how they present their uh, property. So we don't really have a, a say in that matter. But basically, if you are going to be dry camping, you want to use the water tank, there's a crack in the hose that feeds this tank. That is not a big fix, by the way, guys. That's not a hard thing to fix. Um, but be that as it may, previous owner said, eh, let it ride. Let's see what people say about it. But, you know, as is the case in all of our videos, I don't hide defects. I hit the uh, nail on the head and get the elephant out of the room. Um, all in all, I got, I mean, I spent more time talking about a really minor thing than I probably should have. This this thing's in good shape. This is in really good shape. And this classic 264 is really still the predecessor to the modern 264. This thing's still basically in production today. It's so good, it's one of the very few that actually has stood the test of time. I mean, outside it looks really good. Inside it's in great shape. I haven't seen... Uh, I cannot locate anything like, a, uh, you know, a leak or anything. Um, any appliances you see, uh, uh, we have been advised are in good working order. Air, furnace, uh, the, the stove uh, facilities here, refrigerator. Now, the original microwave looks like she done gave up the ghost at some point. But this one here is just a, a simple aftermarket um, replacement. Just one of these little, you know, low dollar specials you can get from Walmart around holiday time. Things like that. Um... But, you know, again, everything, by and large, pretty fair shape. Your cushions, your upholstery, they're not all worn down and torn up. It's, it's really, it's really not bad. If you're looking to upgrade from a pop-up or if you're looking to make this your first camper, like it was the previous owners, I think, um, you know, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of here. This is a great first-time camper, especially if you're going to do some park camping. Good storage, um, you know, pretty good-sized sink and everything here. Uh, you get to see my legs in the mirror. I mean, that's got to be worth something, right? Right? I mean, <laughs> a little entertainment center up here. Um, the dinette and sofa, if you're not aware, those can fold down into extra sleeping spaces, and there are storage below uh, benches and seating areas, things like that. Um, all of the window hardware, like your, your shades and whatnot, appear to be in really good working order and shape. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do, so that was an awesome, uh, you know, surprise. You hear all the time how people say, oh man, these new campers, they don't have any of the storage my old one did. There's a couple reasons for that. Slide outs are a big reason. Interestingly, slide outs give you space, but they also eliminate the ability to have storage. So this big floor to ceiling closet where you can hide a grown man, uh, those things just can't exist anymore. The other thing is people wanted bigger bunks. So um, today's market, this floor plan has two double sized bunks that stick out. Well, that meant that the bathroom suddenly had to go like this. That meant that this stuff had to go away to make room for it. So that's kind of how these things have evolved over time. People opted to go for more open space and sleeping capacity over storage capacity. But that's a consumer mandated thing that the RV business has listened to and followed suit accordingly. Pretty simple rear bath, nothing fancy here, but you're not uh, buying a camper to spend Super Bowl Sunday in the bathroom, obviously. 
um, living space here, you know, on a rainy day, it's got enough. You can sit here, you can play some board games, you can have your breakfast or dinner at the table. That's all you really need to do. Good cross breeze windows, and this is, uh, you know, classic style construction that still use jealousy windows everywhere. Those are a little less common in today's market. Neat thing is this does have a private front uh, bedroom. This door actually slides right here. And this is a classic east-west bed. And what's interesting is what's old is uh, now becoming new again. RVs are starting to incorporate these old classic designs in today's market again, which is really exciting. One of the cool parts about this is that it opens up an opportunity for a closet for mom and dad that today's campers don't have. A lot of them just have the little closets on each side of the camper versus a big giant thing like this. There's advantages both ways, don't get me wrong. What I like about this is windows, 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 windows. And though you have a little folding TV stand here, looks like last guy never used it. Instead, he uh, put a flat screen mount against the wall. What I like, though, is that he didn't take it down and leave uh, an uh, ugly cut in the wall. But look at this. He removed a section of this trim right here, uh, to uh, w which is still located right here to make room for this. But he kept the trim. So they were very cautious about keeping everything right in its place where it belongs, even giving you the screws that you're going to need probably for your TV to go through this thing. That's a nice little personal touch that not everybody does for you. It's really hard to try to go to like Home Depot and try to just look at the bins of screws and just hope and pray you're getting the right one to screw in the back of a TV. So that, again, good indicators, good signs here. Um, if you're going to be car park camping, this thing's turnkey ready. If you want a dry camp, all you need to do is replace a dry or uh, a fresh tank fill hose. Big deal. No big deal. This thing's ready to go camping. 800-256-5196. Hey, Lit RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.